Hey everyone, I am Vivek and I am going to be talking about skipping to the next generation of computing using silicon photonics chiplets. The title of this talk is skip to the next generation of computing extending more than more with silicon photonic chiplets in package and all of us are from Broadcom. Um, myself Vivek Raghunath and I'm a uh, senior principal engineer and product architect at uh, Broadcom leading all the product development efforts and Carl is our senior principal systems architect. Bapi is our uh, systems architect on the NIC side while Prasad is our architect focusing on networking side. Rebecca focuses on connectivity and uh, a product line manager for our uh, business and Manish manages the entire marketing and operations for optical system division at Broadcom. Here's an example of a 2.3 million square foot data center that powers our everyday applications like e-commerce, search engines, video streaming, including this web conferencing. And inside the data center sit over 100k plus servers with CPUs, TPUs, GPUs that have over 19.5 zettabytes of cloud movement between them with the help of over 10k switches and over million optical interconnects. This is an example of a legacy network architecture within a hyperscale data center where the high speed connectivity between the servers are established using switches and optical interconnects across various networking layers starting from top of rack to leaf to spine to core layer. As the intra data center traffic continues to grow at an annual rate of 25%, there is an increasing push for more efficient scale-out architectures that have pools of compute, storage, and accelerated resources communicating via low latency, low power fabric. Now consider a case of a memory disaggregation where there is a need for all-to-all -all network interconnects between CPU pool to memory pool. Such a connection can be established with either direct attached copper electrical cables or using CXL over optical cables. However, the copper cables are fairly bulky and pose a scaling challenges as the number of nodes continue to increase beyond eight, thereby calling for a need for optical fibers and optical switch implementation as these nodes go up. Such architectures have further motivated the need for reimagining the rack design. The image on the right shows a design of a typical top of rack switch system. It doesn't look very different for a CPU or a GPU server rack unit. Each of them have an ASIC inside the rack unit and a bunch of optical transceiver modules on the front plate pluggable. Traditionally, we have maintained this form factor which leaves us with two options to increase and aggregate bandwidth. The first option is to stack the rack units which takes up more space, power and cost. The other option is to increase the channel bandwidth that translates to higher power as bandwidth goes up. Let's dive deeper to understand the limitations of this copper channel scaling. What you see is a cross section of a front plate pluggable system where a typical channel goes through multiple transitions from diode to substrate to PCB to front plate connector before the optical conversion. Each of these interfaces translates to additional loss thereby requiring additional surges power. The graph on the bottom left shows how an electrical signal degrades once it leaves an ASIC dime and travels to an endpoint. And as the line rate increases from 50G to 100G to 200, the losses through a standard system increases from under 10 dB to over 20 dB of loss. 
also as the number of IO increases the fan out distance increases as well so in order to flatten the power curve you would have to keep the total loss prior to the optics conversion constant as the bandwidth increases this would translate to higher shoreline density and shorter RF distance prior to the optics conversion in fact we can evaluate the analog IO efficiency of the system as a whole by investigating how much of this bandwidth density can we escape from the system and the energy needed to do the same. Now consider a scenario where we eliminated the connector and soldered the optical chiplet directly on the substrate that have bump density similar to that of an ASIC die. This essentially is a system and package with optical chiplets leveraging already existing semiconductor chiplet assembly ecosystem. This forms the basis of silicon photonic chiplets in package or skip platform for optical IO. Skip eliminates all the transitions associated with legacy connector approaches and has a significantly low loss channel through the package before the optics conversion. The bottom image shows a cross-sectional view of the skip based CPU and gives an idea about the level of integration that can be achieved on an MCM. Because of the significant density improvement and pit match to the ASIC bump IO in the skip approach, you get a two step improvement in the IO efficiency compared to the other implementations that involves shortening the trace length by bringing the connectors closer to the switch time. This opens up a new possibility to improve the data center utilization of critical assets. So here are some of the architectural migrations that would be enabled by skip IO along with their respective bandwidth power density and latency targets for these applications. The first one is a low overhead, very high density Ethernet switching where we are approaching adoption of over 51.2 terabits aggregate bandwidth from an ASIC where skip IO can provide significant power and cost benefits. The introduction of processor offload in the market has also generated requirements for these GPU and TPU devices to communicate directly with each other without an intermediate fabric. However, this many to many architecture is currently practically limited to four to eight chips on a single board due to copper limitations. Skip IO can alleviate those density concerns. Resource pooling, where many processors can access a pool of assets such as storage drives or special processor will also increase scale out requirements. This calls for a high shoreline bandwidth density that can be made by skip IO. Finally, memory disaggregation where multiple CPUs are dynamically accessing banked memory could generate an entirely new class of IO requirements requiring long reach, connectivity, very low power density and extremely low latency. Each of these Last three examples are further constrained on shoreline I.O. availability due to the presence of HBM and are driving meaningful new investments in I.O. density and packaging where skip I.O. could prove valuable. So let's take a look at the building blocks of the skip I.O. Skip I.O. as a platform requires integration of several key technology blocks. The most obvious one is the need for silicon photonics chiplet platform that leverages advanced semiconductor ecosystem for wafer scale manufacturing of all the photonic active and passive devices including modulators and photodiodes on a silicon wafer and low loss SOI wafers. In addition, you would need a highly differentiated ASIC and a TSP silicon along with these blocks that are designed in uh, leading CMOS node. You would also need 
a power and performance optimized mixed signal IC for EO and OE conversion in both either CG platform or a CMOS platform. You would also need high power and highly reliable laser sources for optical power uh, delivery that would have to be volume friendly and multiple wavelength sources as well. Finally, you would need an advanced packaging technology building blocks to co-package all these building blocks together. These elements for SKIP would include uh, technologies like TSV integration, chip-on wafer or chip-on chip assembly processes, multi-chip module packaging, reflow compatible optics assembly, and fiber connector assembly. With end-to-end -end integration of all these technologies, you can truly make a SKIP platform that can maximize IO efficiency. So let's look at the demonstration of the platform utilizing all these elements. We have two different test vehicles for demonstrating the SKIP platform. The first one is that of an 8-channel SKIP IO in a transceiver module form factor that is shown here. In this module, the silicon photonics engine is co-packaged with a digital signal processor die in an MCM package with a 100G serial interface between the DSP and the silicon photonic engine chiplet. The engine has an integrator laser and a detachable optical connector interface. The 8-channel skip is reflowed to this PCB thereby demonstrating the capability of the reflow compatibility of the optical interface. The scalability of this platform is proven in the second test vehicle which is a 32 channel variant of the skip IO. In this test vehicle we have an MCM of a Tomahawk switch ASIC that has 256 channels of 100G serial IO out of which 128 channels of um, serial link escape as optical IO through 4 by 32 channel skip while the remaining 128 escape as an electrical IO. We have an external laser in this case providing an optical power to the skip through a detachable fiber connector. Thus the fiber connectors have three fiber cables including the transmit uh, receive data path and the laser. So the superiority of this architecture is obvious by looking at the signal integrity performance of the 100 gig channel prior to the optics conversion. Here is a plot of the differential insertion loss of a representative transmitter channel that would be modulating at 100 gig PAM4. The channel loss is around 2 dB at Nyquist frequency of 26 GHz. If you recall the loss plot from before, we are typically looking at 16 dB loss for a front plate pluggable or say FPP architecture. The advantage of short RF channel to optics has never been more obvious when you look at a 2 dB for a skip channel compared to that of a 16 dB for an FPP channel. So let's take a look at the performance of the optical IO link. The transmitter performance of the skip IO links are measured for 100 G per lane PAM4 modulation of the incoming electrical signals at host interface. This is done by measuring the transmit I characteristics at the line side using the DCA. The transmit side of such an optical IO link is thus characterized by the linearity of the link as measured by TDQ and the optical modulation swing as reflected by the extinction ratio. Both the 8 channel and the 32 channel skip IO are compliant to IEEE requirements of a 100G PAM4 link. On the received side, the performance of these links are evaluated based on the prefect bit error rate VER measured at the host receiver side of the link. For the 8 channel skip, the host receiver is at the digital 
CDR, which is clock and data recovery die, while for the 32 channel skip, the host receiver is at the CERDIS interface that is integrated as part of the switch ASIC die. Burr is usually plotted as a function of optical modulation amplitude OMA and has a bathtub curve where there is an optimum OMA at which Burr is at a minimum characterized by Burr flow. At lower than optimum OMA, Burr increases due to noise, while at higher than optimum OMA, Burr increases due to non-linearities associated with the overload limit of that of a trans impedance amplifier. The received performances of both the 8 channel and the 32 channel skip IO are IEEE compliant. Having demonstrated the feasibility and the scalability of this platform, let's revisit the IO efficiency plot. So I will start off by resizing the scale a little bit. Now if we were to treat the integrated CPU as a CMOS with optical IO, a true yardstick would be to compare it to a CMOS die with an electrical IO. The energy penalty associated with EO and OE conversion can explain the difference between these two systems. However, in the silicon photonics platform, you have another toolkit in on-chip wavelength muxing and demuxing to increase the bandwidth density, thereby improving the IO efficiency. So now you actually have three independent vectors of scaling that uh, you can leverage. The first one is obviously increasing the number of wavelengths that you can mux and demux. In addition, you can also increase the electrical IO density by using advanced packaging. And finally, you can increase the channel speed by leveraging the traditional PPA scaling for a CMOS node. So with these uh, three independent vectors of scaling, you are truly able to scale the IO efficiency of this platform over multiple generations. So let's understand how it influences the CMOS ecosystem. So as we have progressed through the advanced CMOS nodes, Analog I.O. efficiency does not scale as well as the digital um, scaling. This has motivated the need for more than more approaches involving hybrid chiplet integration approaches in this ecosystem. Silicon Photonics acts as a platform to enable this extension along with other hybrid chiplets to increase the analog I.O. efficiency of this ecosystem. The foundry and the OSAT ecosystem is already starting to realize the potential of photonics. So to summarize, skip-based CPU with integrated silicon photonics provide a true step improvement in I.O. efficiency of next-gen high-speed interfaces. The chiplet ecosystem partner investment in foundry, EDA, assembly and test is crucial. So if you are listening to this talk, you have a role to play in the industry's ability to deliver this platform. Finally, the skip platform can scale to serve the IO needs beyond Ethernet switching to next generation compute and memory system connectivity. Thank you. For any questions, do reach out to Manish and uh, you can check out our website for more details. Thank you.